right, the rightful one to, to do video reactions. And now, and now we will do, and with him gone we will, we will get started. And with him gone we will do what we do. So, let's see. This one's from the Scoundrel's Cantina. And it's called My Trip to, to the Real Tatooine. Sound Tatooine. <laughs> Despise that dust. Bowl. Let's. Let's get started. Guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you my travels through Tunisia that I went on with my girlfriend Teodora in September 2018. Originally, this was meant to be a holiday by the Mediterranean Sea, although the voyage eventually took us all the way to the Saharan Desert, as well as to quite a few Star Wars filming locations from both A New Hope and The Phantom Menace. I'll mostly be going over everything interesting that we've seen and visited, so anyway, let's begin. Since we are from Serbia, the plane trip didn't take that long at all, probably around 2 hours, although I don't remember much of it since I fell asleep. Anyway, it was so good to be in an airplane again, because it's been years since I moved from Australia, and the feeling of traveling again was great. In Tunisia, we stayed in a hotel called Club Kantawi, which was close by to the city of Sousse, and it was a huge and beautiful hotel with a great view. On our third day of vacation, our trip to the Saharan Desert began very early in the morning in order for us to have time to visit everything that was between us and Sahara, so here's where it all gets interesting. Our first stop was at a town called El Gem, which was once a part of the Roman Empire. There we visited the El Gem Amphitheater, which was built around the year 238 AD, making it around 1700 years old. It is the third largest amphitheater in the world, as well as the best preserved one, even though during World War II a battle took place here, which is visible due to countless bullet holes. It is estimated that it could house around 35,000 people, and was of course used for gladiatorial matches, but surprisingly enough, not so much gladiators versus gladiators, but gladiators fighting all kinds of animals. The construct itself is quite big and has about three levels, not counting the so-called catacombs, or tunnels if you will. There's a lot to see and explore here, and not to mention that some scenes from the movie Gladiator were filmed here, specifically in the arena itself, although the background of it was CGI'd quite a bit in post-production. 
Also, some scenes from the movie Monty Python's Life of Brian were filmed here as well, specifically the scenes in the amphitheater. So after our visit of the gladiatorial arena in El Jam, we continued to go south and came upon the rocky region where the people known as the Berbers live. Now this is the place where a lot of inspiration came from for our favorite Star Wars place, which is of course Tatooine. The Berbers are some of the oldest groups of people that have been living in Northern Africa, and a lot of them live in a hole in the ground, almost exactly like Luke Skywalker did. Since there are no visible houses here at all, the only way you could know that someone lived there was if you saw a Mercedes in the middle of nowhere, or simply a hole in the ground. This was like nothing that we've ever seen before, and really reminded us of the Hobbit houses from Middle Earth. Around the same area, we had lunch at a hotel called Hotel Les Berberes, which was basically like the last homestead. I mean, it had everything. Underground tunnels, an open center in the middle with more tunnels, and even underground rooms, and it was bloody awesome. We were told that when George Lucas was making Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, a huge amount of inspiration and ideas for Tatooine came from this type of architecture, as well as the very name Tatooine, which is an actual city in Tunisia. By the way, a fun fact here. When the sand crawler scenes were being filmed for A New Hope, the Tunisian government asked George Lucas to move away from the Libyan border after Libya threatened military action, thinking it was a large war vehicle. Anyway, after lunch, we went to a better bed house in the ground, which wasn't really the last homestead if someone's asking, but it was almost as if it was. There, Teodoro was chosen to be dressed as a better bed woman, as you can see, but soon they caught my scent as well, so we were both dressed in better bed clothes. And yeah, I know it's hilarious, and that my face is... eh. Nonetheless, it was a very fun experience, especially since we didn't really get the chance to go see the real Oz homestead. Sadly, the real Oz homestead was only about a kilometer away from us when we were in the Hotel Les Berberes in the town of Matmata. Anyway, just so you know, the Oz homestead is also a hotel and it's called City Driss, where you can spend your time in Luke Skywalker's home for 10 bucks a night. After all this, we had a long ride to the town of Duz, which was built in an oasis and basically at the doorstep of the Saharan Desert. Before we got there, we slowly saw how the terrain was changing from rocky hills into a desert-like plain with more and more sand. When we finally arrived to Duz, we saw a real-life oasis for the first time in our lives and it was just amazingly beautiful. On some of the most uninhabitable terrains on the planet, nature was blossoming basically out of nowhere. It felt as if it was unreal, especially knowing that 50 meters from the oasis, there was 2,000 kilometers of sand. The feeling is as if you're basically at the edge of the world and at the end of civilization. God sure is an awesome designer, to say the least. Of course, since we were there, we went camel riding into the desert in single file to hide our numbers. These tracks are side by side. Sand people always ride single file to hide their numbers. While riding on our camels, I of course felt like I was riding a bantha on the dunes of Tatooine, preparing to raid some towns. Now instead of talking too much, I'll just show you. So after the camel rides, we stayed in a beautiful hotel in Duz, which was basically a square-shaped building that surrounded the swimming pool, which was in the middle. A very cool thing was that the hotel's palm trees were full of birds and teeming with life, and what made it even more beautiful was that it was literally 50 meters away from where the desert starts. Anyway, we had to get up very early in the morning, as our next destination was at Tunisia's largest salt lake, Shot el -Jerit. This huge salt lake is almost devoid of water during the summer, although at winter it has water but it's very shallow, like basically half a meter. Shot El Jared is where the exterior of the last homestead was filmed for A New Hope and Attack of the Clones, as well as the Twin Sun scene with Luke Skywalker. Since we were on a tour bus which didn't really go off-road, we didn't get to visit the exterior part of the last homestead since it's about 5 kilometers off the main road in the middle of nowhere, although we did see something equally as cool very early in the morning. Sorry. 
Yes, this is where the beautiful sunset was filmed when Luke is looking at the horizon, and all I'm gonna say is that it was simply an amazing experience. Also, another cool thing here is that we saw a small salt pond with some reddish water, which was in that color because of the small red crabs that live in it. Now, even though I'm not a fan of Star Wars The Last Jedi whatsoever, I really did like the concept of the planet Crate, especially the comic book of it, called Storms of Crate. Now this pond, or in other words, this salt lake, really reminded me of Crate, especially because while we were in the bus, we saw some areas which were completely white because of the salt that had more red water ponds. Salt. Star Wars The Last Jedi Crate scenes weren't filmed here, but it was still cool nonetheless. Anyway, our next stop was at a place called Chibika, which was near a town called Tozer. This place was also another oasis, as well as a Roman outpost, which was called Ad Speculum. Today it is famous for being the place where lots of scenes were filmed for Star Wars A New Hope, as well as for Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. As you can see, behind me is the mere start of the area that leads to the canyon called City Bullel, which is also called Star Wars Canyon for the numerous scenes filmed there for both Episode 1 and Episode 4. The rock formations in nature here is amazing, especially the small stream of mineral water that flows through Chibika and its oasis. Some of the major movie scenes that were filmed in this canyon were the Indiana Jones chase of the Nazis in Raiders of the Lost Ark, as well as when the Nazis were marching through the canyon and were stopped by Indiana and his rocket launcher. Now regarding the Star Wars scenes filmed here, there was a brief scene of the pod race, but I'm not quite sure where exactly it was filmed and which part of it is in The Phantom Menace. With the scene when Ben Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, R2-D2 and C-3PO come upon the slaughtered Jawas and the destroyed Sandcrawler was filmed here as well. Two other scenes that were filmed here were spliced with footage from Death Valley in Northern America, which was when R2-D2 was kidnapped by the Jawas and when Luke Skywalker was attacked by Tusken Raiders. Now it's very hard to find the exact locations for all these scenes because it's been quite a few years since when those movies were filmed, but nonetheless, we know that they were here somewhere. Anyway, we climbed out of the canyon and had a terrific view of the canyons and mountains that stretched out further, as well as the desert, which was our next destination. we got into our desert rides which would drive us directly into the desert at very high speeds and it was so awesome. This was probably one of the funnest parts of our entire journey even though all of them were fun. I mean we were bouncing in the jeep like water balls especially when the terrain slowly started to change into a dune sea desert. Some dunes around 1977, the scene where C-3PO and R2-D2 get out of the escape pod were filmed somewhere here around us, but it's impossible to pinpoint its exact location. Anyway, we had a really bumpy ride here at angles that the camera can't really describe to you because of how different it was in real life. Our first stop in the desert was Ongel Gemma, which is also known as Camel Head Rock, which is where we see Darth Maul arrive to Tatooine for the first time. The specific spot where Darth Maul was standing was at the very top of the rock, and was looking directly at the area where me and my girlfriend were standing when capturing this footage. It is also the direction where he sent his probe droids. Later in The Phantom Menace, we see the exact same spot, although this time they have mirrored the footage when Darth Maul is leaving to confront Pai Gon Jin. It was so cool to be here, and also I found some broken dish in the sand, as well as some naturally formed glass, which is of course a part of my collection. Soon enough, we'll be back on the road again, during which time we filmed some more bumpy footage while we were flying in the back seats, but sadly, we didn't know we were gonna drive through the Yardang field, so we didn't capture it on camera. Now, the Yardang field is where a brief pod race scene takes place, where the Royal Naboo ship is parked in the desert, 
And most importantly, where Qui-Gon Jinn duels against Darth Maul for the first time. Yep, that's why we passed through in our jeep, but it was too quick and we didn't really expect it. Then finally, after all the things that we've seen, we arrive to Mos Eisley. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. This was probably one of the best things that we've seen in our entire trip, and definitely the most fun out of it all. I basically scaled every inch of the place in order to see everything there is to see, as well as to find where every single scene was filmed for The Phantom Menace. Usually this place doesn't have people selling stuff and is most of the time empty, but as you can see, we were really lucky because it felt even more authentic with them there. Anyway, one of the first major scenes that were filmed here was when Qui-Gon, Padme, R2-D2 and Jar Jar are entering Mos Espa, which is the most easily recognizable in this entire place, as you can obviously see. Next up, we have the shot when they're all arriving to Waddle's Junk Shop. This scene here is located on the other side when they're arriving to Mos Espa, and basically all the scenes filmed here are camera angle tricks to make it seem as if the sets are huge, but in fact at different angles, and the similar architecture styles make it seem that way. Now the scene when Qui-Gon Jinn is talking to Waddle in his junkyard is probably right next to Waddle's Junk Shop as far as I can tell, although of course during filming there were way more details all around, which are not here anymore. Qui-Gon Jinn's alley is located right here behind them in the background when they go into Waddle's shop. Basically, once you take an in-depth look at the footage, everything seems to make more sense. Next scene up is when Jar Jar makes a mess and gets in trouble with Saboba, who's having a drink in a cafe, which is in one of the streets of the Mos Espa set, and isn't a simple camera angle trip. Basically, this here is when we see them walking towards the camera, which would be where I am right now, and the cafe here is on the left. The last scene that is filmed in Mos Espa was Jira's food stand, and when she says, Storm's coming up, honey. You better get home quick. As you guys can see, the food stand is right on the corner of the street where the scene with Saboba was filmed. This location was probably the most challenging to find without having the Phantom Menace in hand for comparison, but I found it anyway. Now you're gonna see all the footage that I have from Mos Espa, so enjoy.
stuff of that kid or I'll force choke you for now. After our trip to the real Tatooine, we returned to a hotel near the city of Seuss as a holiday was not over yet. Some other interesting things that we saw were the pirate ships docked in Seuss that we used as a tourist attraction with which tourists would sail a few kilometers off the shore and experience what it's like being on the ship as well as even walking the plank. Sadly none of them were working the day that we were there, although we did meet a very nice guy called Abdelak who let us simply have a tour of the ship he worked on for free. Believe us when we say it, but in Tunisia, getting something for free is a big deal and very generous. The name of the ship that we were on was the Hannibal and it was a very nice experience since I've never had the chance to be in a ship like this, let alone a pirate themed ship. As some of you may know, I'm a huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan and even make videos on it on the second channel, The Crossroads Inn, so yeah, this was very cool for me. I inspected every detail of the ship and it would be so awesome if you actually lived in one and made it your own. Now the last thing that was quite new to us was the parachuting off the coast of our hotel, which was amazing. I've always been scared of heights, although only when I'm on a high place like a mountain or a tall building, so this type of height was simply pure fun for me. We were probably around 100 meters off the ground, by my best guess. Me and Teodora simply had a great time, and it also happened on the day of her birthday, which was very sweet. Before I end this video, here are a few things that I've acquired on my trip to Tunisia. As I've said earlier, I found some naturally formed glass at the filming location of the Darth Maul scenes in The Phantom Menace, which was basically made due to sand being heated up at very high temperatures. I also found this broken dish half buried in the sand, as well as took it home with me as a souvenir. We also bought some Desert Rose Crystals, which Tunisia has a whole lot of and is a must-have if you're going there. They are simply a very nice souvenir, that's for sure. When we went shopping in the city of Seuss, I bought a golden lamp, which is of course, as you all know, most notably seen in Aladdin, which I've been a fan of since I was a kid, and I still love it to this day. On our trip to the Hannibal pirate ship, Abdullah gave us these two wooden pirate bats. I'm not really sure what they're actually called or what they were used for, but I guess it's for kicking someone's ass or something like that. And nonetheless, Enjoy. it's now part of my vast collection of pirate things, as well as many others. Also, I just want to give a huge thank you to Abdelak for the pirate bats. Anyway guys, this is it on the video of my trip to Tunisia, and I really hope you all enjoyed it. It was an amazing holiday, and being a huge Star Wars fan made it all a lot more interesting, since this place is basically where it all began all those years ago. The inspiration for the channel theme and name was the most Isa Cantina, which is in other words Tatooine, so this all felt as if I traveled where it all began in a much bigger sense of the word. I want to give a huge shout out to our amazing tour guide Tomislav because he was the one that shared with us all the knowledge that I've talked about in this video and was super great at doing his job which made all of this even more fun and interesting. If you want to support us, subscribe for more videos like this one as the Pyramids of Egypt as well as the Valley of Kings and Valley of Queens was a 2019 holiday destination. Also check out our second channel The Crossroads Inn where we do all kinds of videos that you might like. Anyway remember guys. God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video. You rebel scum. This party is scum.
wasn't a bad experience, Scoundrel's Cantina. You should be grateful you did. I didn't kill you in your video. A spot. Or you because I could reach out with the force and this. And force choke you where you stand. Now. I want all of you to listen to me. The next time. I want I want you to now I want you to subscribe. Share this video with as many people as you can. can. Doesn't matter who. And also I want you I want you also to subscribe to this channel. If you do neither, I I will force choke you where you stand. Force choke you from beyond. My reach is unlimited. I would I would slice you up. I would say I would slice you up in my lightsaber. But unfortunately it's in the it's being repaired. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And a good and a shout out and I can't believe I'm saying this. Also give a shout. I am also giving a shout out to Scoundrels Cantina for this. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this. For those who took time out of their day, thank you so much for watching this video. Now. Now, I will. And now. You. You will. And now. You will. You will either. You will either join. You will either join us. Or die. What's it going to be? I will wait. So what'd you decide in the comments? I will be reading them. Chose to die, you wish to be corrected. So remember. Just a heads up, the next the next time you see me on this, I will reveal to you my true face.